Warning this fan fiction does not belong to me neither does the fan art. Credits to the original artist and author to the fan art and the fan fiction. Motivation is fleeting and fickle. Kiyumi refuses to rely on it. Rather, discipline keeps him going. On days where motivation leaves him, he wrenches himself out of bed to go on his morning run, to complete his assignments, to go to practice. Half-hearted is not in his vocabulary. Even on his most grueling days, the satisfaction of a job well done makes everything worth it. It's why he stayed in university all four years, graduating top of his class. It's why he stuck to his workout routine even when he wasn't on the court. It's why now, he slams down every single one of Atsumu's sets with every ounce of effort he can muster. Jeez, Omikun. Those wrists of years are freaky. Kiyumi never tires of hearing that. As a child he would show off his hypermobility, reveling in the use and grosses. Knowing the power his spikes hold only makes each declaration sweeter. Atsumu says it like an insult, and yet Kiyumi knows that's not how he means it. There's something different in the tone of Atsumu's voice, something almost reverent. It scares him. Still, Kiyumi can't help the smug smirk that forms. Kiyumi is no stranger to people depending on him. He's played volleyball for as long as he can remember and had more group projects than he could count in university. But no one has ever demanded a performance from him in the way Atsumu does. Kiyumi, while careful to never overexert himself, gives his all during practice and their matches. He can tell when the ache in his muscles tells him he's making progress or that he's gone too far. Atsumu makes him feel like it's not enough. He tosses a little higher and moves a little faster. He's a challenge demanding to be met. And Kiyumi rises to meet him. They group up for an inter-team scrimmage, Kiyumi's favorite part of practice. He squares his shoulders and takes his position on the court. Errors hold little consequence in this match, but Kiyumi plans on showing just how far he's come. He's up first to serve. The weight of the ball in his hand grounds him. The sound of the whistle primes him for action. He takes two deep breaths before tossing the ball in the air and striking it into the opponent's court. He watches as his teammates turned rivals scramble to pick up his serve, but it's no use. Not a single one of them can touch it before it crashes to the floor. Bakuto manages to connect with his second serve but it flies out of bounds, earning him their second point. Kiyumi's palm tingles and he flexes his hand. His streak is broken on the third serve. He breathes in deep and surveys the other side of the net. He stays light on his feet, body primed and ready, waiting for the spike. He watches the ball soar right to Hinata's waiting hand and he moves. He sends the ball flying high towards Atsumu, flashing a toothy grin as he watches it soar. Shao, He calls. Kiyumi's heart pounds as he watches Hinata slam the ball onto the other side of the court. The match comes to a close when Atsumu scores the winning point with a setter done. Hinata jumps him in excitement, and even Kiyumi can't help the small smile and firm nod he gives Atsumu. A fire burns in Atsumu. Kiyumi can sense it. It's the same fire that burns in him, that drives him to score one point after another. On their way to the locker room, Atsumu claps Kiyumi on the back, hand lingering slightly longer than usual. The warmth of his palm seeps through his jersey. He doesn't flinch. Nice job today, Omikun. Yes, yeah, spikes are terrifying as always. Kiyumi smiles. He doesn't know when he began craving Atsumu's praise. Validation from others has never been something he cared much for. He has his own standards to live up to. But Atsumu is different. Bokcho comes up next, swinging an arm around his shoulder and bringing him in close. You sure showed us no mercy out there. I'm glad you'll be on the same side of the net of the next match. Kiyumi grimaces, trying to weasel his way out of Bakuto's grasp. Thank you. Oh. We should go out tonight since we have a day off tomorrow. The rest of the team immediately begins chattering and making plans with Bakuto. Kiyumi keeps walking towards the showers. It takes him 10 minutes to finish washing up before he puts on his clothes and walks out of the gym. He hears footsteps rapidly approaching before he feels a hand on his shoulder. Omikun. Kiyumi raises an eyebrow, waiting for Atsumu to continue. You should come with us. It'll be fun. Kiyumi remembers the last event he went to that involved alcohol and his teammates. Bakuto and Hinata ended up singing on top of a table and Median left a 50% tip by way of apology. 
No thanks. Oh come on. I know they can be a bit much. I know I can be a bit much. Atsumu chuckles softly. But we really do like hanging out with ya. The corner of Kiyumi's lips twitch underneath his mask. Okay. The usual Izaki at 8, right? Atsumu's eyes widen a fraction before he nods frantically. Yeah. See you there. Atsumu takes off in the other direction with a skip in his step. When Kiyumi enters the Izakaya, he spots his teammates nestled in a corner table, far away from the other patrons. Atsumu waves him over, a faint flush already blooming on his cheeks. Kiyumi smiles under his mask. He settles next to him, knees barely brushing. Kiyumi goes to flag down a waiter but Atsumu speaks up. Oh I already ordered fare here. Limoncello, right? Kiyumi's eyes widen. Yeah, that's right. Kiyumi picks at the yakitori they ordered for the table. He had an early dinner that evening, not wanting to spend too much that night. When his drink arrives, he drinks it perhaps a bit too eagerly. A pleasant warmth buzzes through his bones, and he begins to relax. Are you ready for tomorrow, Sakusaku? Bakuto asks, smacking him on the back. Kiyumi shakes him off, but doesn't lose his smile. Of course I am. Of course he is. Atsumu chimes in, bumping their shoulders together. You saw him during that scrimmage. With me set into him we're gonna win this thing fair sure. Atsumu smiles at him, toothy and genuine, and Kiyumi's heart flips. The flush on Atsumu's face has deepened, his hair is slightly ruffled, and somehow one of the buttons on his shirt has come undone. Has Atsumu always looked this good? Kiyumi downs the rest of his drink, hoping to blame his flush on the alcohol. When the waiter stops by he orders another. As the night goes on, Kiyumi presses closer into Atsumu. Their thighs touch, and Kiyumi giggles into Atsumu's shoulder as he recounts the story of how he and Osamu swapped places for an entire week in class before their teacher noticed. Never thought I'd hear you laugh, Omi Omi. Kiyumi looks up at Atsumu. His lips shine invitingly. Kiyumi's tongue darts out to wet his own, momentarily forgetting about their other teammates. He's dragged away by Bakuto's arm around his shoulder. We should get you to drink more often, Sakusaku. Kiyumi's head spins. He needs to go home. I think I should call it a night. I'm getting tired. He excuses himself from the table, dropping enough money to cover his portion of the bill. Wait. I'll walk you to the bus stop. Atsumu moves to follow him but Kiyumi waves his hand. No need, I'll be fine. You guys have fun. Kiyumi knows if Atsumu follows him he'll do something stupid, and he can't afford to ruin their dynamic right before a match. He boards the bus and makes a beeline for the back. Luckily there's not many passengers at this hour. He tries to clear his head but he's plagued with images of Atsumu's flushed face and inviting smile. He can still hear his boisterous laughter above the engine of the bus. There's nothing he can do to scrub him from his mind. He supposes he shouldn't be so surprised. Atsumu has always been the exception to every rule he's had. Suddenly everything clicks into place. He spends a few more futile moments trying to snuff out the flame that's begun to grow before resigning himself to falling in love with Miya Atsumu. Kiyumi's alarm goes off the morning of their match against the Adlers and he fumbles around the nightstand for his phone. He sits up, not yet opening his eyes, and takes a deep breath. Then two, then three. He gets out of bed, letting muscle memory guide him through his morning routine. Once he's washed his face and had a few sips of tea, he begins to feel more normal and works on breakfast. He eats and cleans up quickly before heading out the door and towards the gym. Kiyumi steps onto the court and his heart thrums with anticipation. Excitement pulses through his veins. Kiyumi's thankful it's a home game. Playing on familiar turf always feels like an advantage. By the time warm-ups finish, he's itching to play. Kiyumi steps on the court and takes his position to serve. The whistle blows, the ball goes up, and he slams it down into the Adler's court. Hoshumi picks it up effortlessly. Kiyumi clicks his tongue. Thankfully, when it gets back in their court, Hinata and Atsumu pick up on his slack, earning them the first point of the match. Kiyumi's second serve is out of bounds, and things don't get better from there. Ball after ball slips through his fingertips. He watches helplessly as the point margin widens. Atsumu says to him. Of course he does. Kiyumi jumps diligently as always. 
but the Adlers shut Kayumi out. He jumps again and again, desperate to score, to make sure Atsumu keeps setting to him, but every time the ball lands miserably at his feet. The whistle makes its final blow of the first set. They lose 16-25. We'll get M next set. Hinata declares, eyes shining with determination. A strong, familiar hand claps him on the back. Don't mind, Omiku. You can't win them all. Kiyumi's jaw clenches and his gut twists. He needs to snap out of this, whatever this is. He's letting his team down. He's letting himself down. He's letting Atsumu down. He shakes his head to clear it, nearly smacking his cheeks for good measure. He won't get anywhere with sulking. When they step back out onto the court, Kiyumi takes a deep breath and steadies himself. The whistle blows. The second set begins. He keeps his eyes trained on the ball, moving to meet it as it flies into their court. His body pulls toward it like a magnet and he connects. For a few hopeful moments, Kiyumi thinks he can make a comeback. But luck is not on his side. He nearly runs himself ragged, frustration giving way to desperation as he continues to chase after the ball. Atsumu calls out to him and he comes, always moving faster and jumping higher but it's never enough. Omi. Please don't. Omiku. Not me. Omi Omi. Anyone else, please. The second loss hurts worse than the first. His palms sting. His thighs ache. His pride crumbles. Kiyumi doesn't know what force moves his body in the third set. His motivation vanishes yet the game demands he play. It demands he win. The whistle blows. His mind frays. From a technical standpoint, Kiyumi does better. He makes clean receives and breaks through the blokers. But exhaustion seeps into his bones. Each jump is reluctant, every dive made on instinct. He's more machine than person, playing with rehearsed steps that he couldn't forget if he tried. But it's still not enough. The ball flies into their court. Kiyumi dives for it and watches as it lands right in front of his outstretched fingertips. The whistle blows. They lose the match. Kiyumi is no stranger to loss. He knows it's inevitable. But Atsumu's words echo through his head. With me set into him we're gonna win this thing fair sure. He picks himself up off the floor, preparing to shake hands under the net. His teammates offer words of encouragement, but he ignores them all. Atsumu says nothing. Kiyumi isn't sure if he's disappointed or relieved. In the shower he scrubs himself until his skin turns pink, trying to wash away every mistake he made. When he finishes changing he slams his locker shut with more force than he intended. He ignores the stares of his concerned teammates, walking out of the locker room. The last thing he needs is their pity. He only gets a block away from the gym before he hears a voice call out. Omi. Kiyumi's shoulders tense, but he doesn't stop walking. He should have known that wouldn't deter Atsumu. Hardly anything does. He cuts Kiyumi off, stopping in front of him. Move, Mihia. He doesn't want to deal with this. Not here, not now. Not until you tell me what's got you all bent out of shape. We lost the match, aren't I allowed to be upset? He tries to move around Atsumu but Atsumu moves to meet him. Well yeah, sure. We all are. But we've lost before, and you've never been like this, Atsumu says, gesturing vaguely. Kiyumi sneers. Like what? Like you think we hate you now or you let us down? Because. Because I did. Kiyumi slaps his hand over his mouth. Atsumu stares back at him wide-eyed, mouth slightly ajar. Kiyumi pushes past him successfully this time. Don't follow me, don't follow me, don't follow me. But Atsumu has never done anything Kiyumi's asked of him, silently or aloud. Atsumu grabs his wrist, grip loose enough that Kiyumi could easily pull away. He doesn't. You didn't let anyone down, Omi. We all made mistakes that coach is gonna chew us out for tomorrow, but I saw you in that final set. Why do ya think I kept tossing to ya? Kiyumi doesn't respond. He has no idea. He hoped he wouldn't, that he'd choose Bakuto or Hinata or even go with another dump instead. But the ball kept coming to him. Cause you kept jumping for me. Kiyumi turns to meet Atsumu's gaze, heart pounding in his chest. He's met with a gentle smile, one he didn't think Atsumu was even capable of. He glances around and, noticing that the street is completely empty, takes a risk. 
He pulls down his mask and presses a soft kiss to Atsumu's lips. He lingers when Atsumu doesn't immediately pull away. Warmth seeps into his chest when Atsumu brings his hand up to cup his cheek, deepening the kiss. When they pull apart, they're both a little flushed and breathless. The match becomes a distant memory. Feeling better? Yeah, Kiyumi thinks. He is. I hope you enjoyed the video see you later yayoi lovers kissing cat face.